Tucked away from Turkey's main travel routes are remote, unexplored villages. In the last 20 years, these villages have changed. First, with the older Kremlin mosque being replaced with new and often much larger religious spaces. And then, as the economy began to falter, villagers started migrating to larger cities in pursuit of employment. Many of those abandoned mosques, of course, have been destroyed by time. Nevertheless, though, mosques are still present throughout the entire country, and many of them are over 50 years old, entirely constructed of wood, beautifully painted, or even full of frescoes. And in my new series, The Sanctuary, I went in search of these religious buildings. You'll see each sanctuary invites you to appreciate its understated beauty while providing a window into a nation's past. In this episode, we're moving away from the Black Sea region of Turkey into central Anatolia, starting with Izmir, as I go in search of more colorful, fresco-filled, abandoned mosques. Of course, it would be pretty impossible for me to make a dedicated video on every find. However, after you've watched this, the penultimate video, why don't you head on over to my website, linked in the description below, to check out the full photography series. Hello everybody, hope you're keeping well. In this week's video, I am in an old mosque again, in the center of Turkey this time. I happen to be particularly quiet because I'm in the middle of a very small village, and I'll explain the reasons why later on. I've just done this whole video, and I'm having to record the whole thing again because I forgot to turn on the microphone. So I need to crack on, get shooting. I'm going to talk about golden hour, challenges with lens flare that I've talked about before, previously on the channel, just very recently. We've got a particular example just over here that we need to combat. Okay, so first of all, I've activated my 24 mm tilt shift lens. I've put it on my Canon R5 as usual, and I've got two shots. I wanna get one of this wall here, this detail that's just over my shoulder, just here. Beautiful, it's the reason I came. But also, I came during golden hour because I had a feeling that the frescoes in here would look particularly amazing during that time of day. And they did, but I forgot to turn on my microphone, as I told you. But I'm gonna talk you through it because I did get footage. So after I've talked you through that kind of golden hour photo, you can then cut back to me battling this lighting challenge over here to round up today. After initially setting up in a rush to capture shots during the nice light, to begin I was too focused I think on the main wall, constantly trying to frame it to include the colours and the details more centrally. Eventually though a step back and an initial one point composition became much clearer. During the golden hour the colours of the wood inside the space take on a new life especially when that golden light filters in through a small window positioned high up on the left. That window positioning creates captivating contrasts and shadows, adding depth and dimension to the scene. The interplay enhances the mosque's architectural features, elevating its visual appeal. In any genre, golden light can make the colors take on a new life. But in architecture, we are not always looking for the space to be bathed in golden hues. But I knew that it could add something here, and the frescoes, they really come alive. A unique challenge presented itself though, a central beam supporting the roof. So I needed to use this obstacle as an asset, guiding the composition so to speak. So by positioning it to the right of frame, the beam served as both a structural element and a compositional guide. Its presence added a sense of depth and perspective, leading the viewer's eye straight towards the heart of the mosque. Essentially, the wall here, it's got stunning frescoes on it, paintings, drawings, and this is what I wanted to capture. In fact, that's the whole reason I came to this site. But there's a window over there, top right hand corner, and it's causing me almighty pain when I'm trying to capture images. There's flare coming in on the side of the lens here, and I've activated lens hood, as you're gonna see in some of the clips, to try to combat it, but it's not ultimately working. The most important element in any mosque is the direction I'm pointing at now, and it's called the Mirab, the niche that indicates the direction of Mecca, the Muslim holy pilgrimage site over in Saudi Arabia. This is what Muslims face when praying, 
and it is the architectural and symbolic focal point of these religious buildings. And I knew in this series I was going to have to capture one or two of them, and I'd pinpointed or targeted this one as one of the main ones that I wanted to shoot. Now, I thought the best thing to do was to avoid the light altogether, go off to one side and completely avoid it, so option A. Problem was, when I went off to the right to look left, I opened up the left-hand window, meaning more lens flare. So I had to opt for the straight-on composition, which I initially was trying to avoid. But, of course, if I pull it off, it would make a better image. Okay, it's a lot darker in here than it was earlier. And I've still got a similar-ish problem. Not much has changed other than the fact that it's getting darker and darker in here and my settings are getting worse. Essentially, when I position my camera like so, with the window just up there, and you'll see it in some of the clips that I've created how much of a problem it's causing me in this shot. But this is the main shot that I came here for, and I'm not going to go away without it. Now, there's two frescoes, big circles on the wall, either side of the main set of pillars in the center of the frame. And I like them in there. I'm gonna try and position myself in such a way that they are the main feature of the shot. Now settings, I'm gonna slightly underexpose when it comes to actually taking this shot. And I'm gonna keep my ISO as low as possible. Don't wanna blow out that window light too much because it is, honestly a bit of a problem. Now you could try directing the camera in a different direction to eliminate that light and I've done a couple of shots like that. Ultimately this is the main one that I came here for and it needs to be nailed. Now I've got maybe an opportunity when the sun's gone completely to be able to capture a shot where maybe the light balances out. But it's going to be pretty dark in here at that point and I don't think it's going to work, so I'm going to have to come up with some other solutions. Now, the first one of those solutions is probably going to be soon, because I'm going to capture this shot now. I like where I'm lined up, and I'm going to create a panoramic. So, top, middle, and bottom. Now, I'm going to lift the center column, so that my camera's position is nearly in the middle of the wall. And the light flare is, is like I said, awful. On the left, it's now not a problem. In fact, it's gone completely, really, from that side. But on this side, there is lens flare. And I'm going to show you in this camera what it is that I'm doing to try and eliminate that. And uh, you can see here on my clip, I'm going to try and use my hand. Now, the lens hood has helped a little bit here, but I'm actually going to try and use my hand just for one bracket to put it in on the right-hand side here and just try and eliminate some of that flare, just so I get one nice clean image of that wall. So let's try and do this. This is not so simple. Now, of course, I told you I did a lens flare video fairly recently in this exact mosque sanctuary series. And you can see that linked above. Now, focus is easy. It's a flush wall. Lining up is not so easy. Now, things have got darker in here, as I said already. I'm going to activate ISO 400, F7-1, but it could even be 6-3, but I want things as sharp as possible where this lens performs at its best. So 7.1 it is. Now, this is pretty much me, and I've got to go for it at this point. So my hand is going to have to be about here to eliminate as much of that lens flare as possible. The problem is, is sometimes it comes into the frame and sometimes not. If it comes in a little bit, it's going to be okay. It's going to still save me. So I'm going to take that shot and it's in a little bit. And now hopefully we can eliminate most of that lens flare. Let's have a look at that. And we have, we've nailed it. So now I need that for the top and for the bottom. Now the bottom's easy. I think the bottom, there won't even be any flare in it. Yes, there's not. So let me just focus that and take the bottom one. That's easy. And finally, we're going to move to the top. When we move to the top, that's going to be at its worst position. There's going to be all kinds of flare. So let's shift upwards. And finally, let's try and block that light. Now, where's it going to have to be? Now, I'm going to take off all the settings on my back of camera so you can see what I'm doing. 
and my hand needs to be basically just off the camera frame here to block the light. Let's try and do that again. Of course, I'm moving a tiny fraction, but I've eliminated almost all of it. Now that is a result. So let me check my settings. I think that's going to have to do me. So essentially what I've got there is I've managed to get myself three shots and they're pretty, the top one in particular is not exposed how I'd like it to be. It's a little bit dark. So I might hang around a little bit longer, see if the light sort of balances out a little bit more, but I've got a feeling it's going to get worse. And I'm going to show you my final result on the screen now. And of course, that wraps up this location. So I mentioned inside that there is reasons why I'm always trying to not draw attention to myself and that's mostly because if you draw attention, noise and show people you're there, it's very difficult to kind of obtain images and they kind of come and hassle you, stand with you. They want to know why the hell you're in their tiny little village and this is why. Look at it, this is like the middle of nowhere. It's all derelict mostly. There's a few villages around, there's a few little houses, there is people living here but it's unbelievable. Um, and of course, for them, it would be a bit strange seeing a tourist in here photographing this. They couldn't probably understand why. And they would hassle me. It would be very difficult to obtain the shots that I did get. And as you saw, it was difficult enough to get those images. Now, in terms of the shots that I've got inside, you've now seen them on the screen. Very difficult, and there is going to be an element of post-processing to them to bring them alive. If you've got any comments, please leave them below. Until next time, I'm going to get back in the car, get out of here, get into a hotel, get warm, get some food, and until next time, bye-bye for now.